All right, well, as promised, I'm back. And now I'm gonna be talking to you about diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm sure DEI is something you probably have heard about in the media, at work, possibly even at other GDG events. But I do wanna just talk a little bit about um, some of the things to think about and also ways to incorporate DEI into the events that you're running as a Google Developer Group organizer. And I actually like to use a different term than just DEI. I like the term JEDI because I also like to include that justice component. And we'll talk a little bit about what the justice component means. But first, let's start off by defining some terms. And of course, you know, one term you've heard plenty is equality. Um, and equality doesn't seem like a bad thing. I mean, it's even in the founding documents for our nation. So equality, what's wrong with that? Well, the problem with equality, of course, is that while it sounds good in principle to treat everybody equally, it doesn't really take into account their different needs. And those needs could be based on a lot of things. It could be based on physical abilities. It could be based on economic opportunities. It could be based on historic injustices. There are a lot of things that can make that equality of tra treatment actually unequal. And that's kind of what's illustrated in this picture here where you see three kids who all have a soapbox to stand on. That's great for the two kids that can see over the fence to see the soccer game, but for the shorter one, that doesn't really help out because they still can't see the game. And that, of course, is what brings up equity. And equity is trying to make sure that everyone has an equal opportunity rather than equal treatment. And so in this case, the soapbox is taken from the tallest kid and given to the shortest one, and now all three of them can see over the fence. And that's why equity is actually more sensible than trying to do equality with uh, when you're dealing with people, because, uh, you know, there can be a lot of reasons why someone needs a little bit of extra support, a little bit of extra help. Um, it may be that they didn't have the same educational opportunities. It may be that they didn't have access to a computer at home, whatever it is. But if you can keep uh, that in mind when you're working with attendees at your meetings, then you know, recognize it's, there's nothing wrong with giving a little bit of extra support to somebody who needs a little bit of extra help. And that that's not really unfair to the others. It's just ensuring that everyone has equal access to what you're doing. And then of course, finally, there's justice. And the idea of justice is to remove those systemic barriers that are preventing people from having equality to begin with. So um, it's something you probably can't do much about as a, an individual or as a Google developer group organizer, but it is something you should be aware of. I mean, you should recognize that there are systemic inequalities that have caused a lack of opportunity for some groups of people or some individuals. And so being aware of that makes it a little bit easier for you to think about how can I help this person to be able to participate in my events and how can I make sure that they're getting the most out of what I'm trying to provide through my meetup? Because let's face it, I mean, I'm hopefully we're all doing this because we have something that we want to share with others. And so we wanna make sure that they're all getting the benefit from that. I'm gonna pick on Google a little bit here. Um, this is the Google Diversity Report for 2022. And so I just wanted to show what Google is doing in the diversity realm. Uh, now, this of course is trying to address the current diversity of the workforce at Google. And these charts don't show that, they just show the hiring for the years 2021 and 2022. And uh, I do apologize, I know they're eye charts. They came out of the diversity annual report. The link is down there at the bottom. I would encourage you to read that actually if you want to learn more about the efforts that Google is taking. But I just wanted to sort of give you a sampling of what's in that report. And again, this is not the total demographics for the workforce at Google. It's just the efforts that Google has taken in hiring from 2021 to 2022. And so you can see that there are some different charts. There's actually three different charts here. Um, there's hiring by race and ethnicity. That's the leftmost one. Um, the dark blue bars are 2021 hiring, 22, 2022 are the light blue bars. And you can see that by race and ethnicity, the majority of the hiring was still Asian and white which is not surprising because that's also the majority of the workforce at Google and most other tech companies. Um, there was uh, 
about equal hiring for Blacks and Latinx uh, over those two years. And then Native American is way down, very small percentage. But of course, um, nationwide, the Native American population is also a small percentage. So you do have to take that into account as well. But uh, Native Americans are definitely very underrepresented in the hiring numbers and in the overall demographics for most tech companies. Um, for gender, and it's, it is interesting that Google only reports uh, male and female. Of course, you know, uh, if you've been answering a question about what your preferred pronouns are and how you identify, uh, you'd know that there really should be more than two choices on here, but that is what they've been collecting demographics for apparently. And so you can see here that the number of women hired has increased compared to 2021. So 2022 was a bump up of about 4%. Um, and there was sort of corresponding decrease in the hiring of males in the US. You also see the Europe, Middle East, and Africa numbers on there just because they happen to be on the same chart. Um, and then intersectional hiring is interesting because that combines the hiring by race and ethnicity with the hiring by gender. And so you can see that there has been an increase in general in uh, female hiring throughout all of the different demographics, except again for the Native American. And that's somewhere where I think that, especially here in the mountain region, that's something we should be aware of because most of us have some significant presence of natives in Native Americans in our areas. You know, here in Arizona, I've got we've got the Thana Otham that are right next to Tucson. We have the Dine, we have the Hopi, uh, same thing. Utah has a large number of indigenous peoples, Colorado, Idaho. I mean, pretty much every state in our region has a some presence of um, indigenous peoples. And so we should really think about how can we reach out to them? And that's not easy. I know I've tried to reach out to the Thana Otham and um, they're probably understandably not really that interested in getting help from the, you know, hey, I'm the white guy here to help. But uh, it does really, it's worth the effort to try and reach out and find ways to make those connections and try to bring them into your community. I think in the long run, it'll really pay off for both the people who come to your meetings and also for you as an organizer. Okay, and I've also been talking about, you know, once you get them to the meeting, um, what about them? You want them to feel included, of course. Everybody who comes to your meetings, you want to feel that they belong there and they're welcome there and that you are taking efforts to try to include them and make sure that they feel comfortable as part of your community because we're building communities. That's what we're about. And so you may recognize this as the first paragraph of the community guidelines. Hopefully you are including this link that's down at the bottom of the slide on your events when you're posting them. Um, these are these are not the complete community guidelines, of course, this is just the first paragraph, as I mentioned, but it does give the idea behind that. I mean, the main thing we're trying to do is we're just trying to make sure that we provide a harassment-free and inclusive event for everyone. And that's the bottom line. And we have to make sure that we enforce that and we really do take that seriously if people are going to come to our events and feel comfortable being there. And you may be wondering, okay, great, Dan. So how do I create a more diverse and inclusive event? Well, this is the entirety of the diversity and inclusion guide that's on the North American Dev Community page. Um, it's one page and I know again, it's like really small type because I tried to fit the whole page on here, uh, but there are some good ideas in there. And you know, some of them seem kind of obvious, like uh, try to incorporate uh, women tech makers in your events or reach out to other diverse groups in your area. Um, one thing I would recommend is if you have a university, if you're lucky enough to have a university near you, um, reach out to them, see if they have a development student, developer student club. If they don't, talk to the faculty and see if you can't get them to start a developer student club. It's a really great source in most cases of an already diverse student body that are eager to be involved with professionals in the field. And so they're going to really love to be involved with your events. And I've had a number of really nice collaborations with the Developer Students Club at the University of Arizona, for example. So do take that opportunity to try and reach out to them and bring that community in. Okay, so I'd like you to think about a few things. I'm gonna give you three minutes. I got a timer I'm gonna start here shortly. Uh, I'd like you to think about how you can promote social justice in your community and 
understand that that is a heavy lift, but start thinking about, you know, ways that you can help to promote that. Um, some steps you could plan to provide equitable experiences for your chapters, um, ways that you can maybe increase the diversity of your chapter membership, and making par participants in your events feel included. So I'm going to start the timer and I'm going to stare at you kind of awkwardly for the next three minutes. I'll give you a few time hacks just so you know when the three minutes is almost up, but start thinking about this now. All right, we're halfway through at 1.30. Thirty seconds. Okay, and that is time. So hopefully you had some good thoughts about that. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is to share those out. So I'd like you to take about five minutes. I'm not going to give the time hacks this time. I will start a timer, but um, I'm not going to interrupt you because I don't want to talk over anyone. And um, I'm going to ask for some of the people in the room, either you know self-organize or um, ask for Jen or some of the other organizers there to lead the discussion. Just have five minutes, so you're not gonna be able to do much, but I would like you to share out some of the thoughts you had about those four questions. So here we go, going to start the timer, and I am not gonna talk for the next five minutes.
Okay, I hope you weren't too distracted by our timer video there. And I hope you had a good discussion about uh, some of the steps you're gonna take to try and promote justice, equity, diversity, diversity and inclusion at your chapter of Google Developer Group. Uh, because remember, ultimately what we want is, you know, diversity is a fact, equity is a choice that we all make, inclusion is an action we can take, and belonging is the outcome. And that's what we really want, is we want people to feel like they belong. So thank you so much. Don't run off. I'm going to be right back with another session.